Hello everybody, my name is Willy Mutscher, I'm an assistant professor here at the University in Tübingen and I welcome you to the summer term 2025 and particularly the lecture series in computational macroeconomics. This is a graduate course aimed at our master students but it is also a challenging course for early PhD students who want to get familiar with state-of-the-art numerical methods that we commonly see and use in modern macroeconomics. And particularly, we will dive into the so-called dynamic stochastic general equilibrium paradigm, so-called DSG models, and discuss several numerical methods to solve and simulate these models. Now, what is the DSG approach? Well, it refers to a very general family and the broad class of structural theoretical models that are strongly rooted in economic theory. We will microfound these models. So that is, we will explicitly formulate and derive the dynamic optimization problems of the various agents and the sectors, the households, the firms, the banks, and the fiscal or monetary authority sections. Maybe there's also an international structure to the models, etc. And we will then mathematically solve the problems of each sector under uncertainty. Now it is very important to understand and be able to work with these G models in modern macroeconomics. Okay, so these models are commonly used in all policy institutions on a daily basis. They are the workhorse model class of modern quantitative but also theoretical macroeconomic research. And it is the leading modeling class uh, and the benchmark for even other competing models. We will, of course, discuss the benefits and shortcomings of this model class, um, what are the advantages, what are the critiques, but still let me be very clear, this course is not so much about the specifics of the models, even though we will discuss several different and interesting features that are important for conducting macroeconomic research, but this course is really about the numerical methods and the ways to solve and simulate these models on your computer. This is the core focus of this class. Now, regarding the actual topics that we'll cover, well, first we will get familiar with the two major building blocks of modern DSG models, that is the real business cycle model and the new Keynesian model framework. Uh, we will try to understand what it means to process these models with the computer. How do I translate my model equations into the computer? How do I solve them numerically? And how then do I do simulations and all sorts of analysis given this model? And we will mainly focus on three different solution methods a deterministic solution method called perfect foresight, a local stochastic solution method called perturbation, and a global stochastic solution method called projection. We will understand the different approaches, not only theoretically, but more importantly, we will get our hands dirty and actually program the algorithms ourselves. Of course, we will also see advanced software packages that automate many things and improve on the simplest algorithms that we will do. Um, but in my experience, it is very important to program these algorithms at least once so you really know what is happening. You really understand the benefits, the advantages, but also the shortcomings of any solution method and then use the software packages with much better confidence and ease of use and particularly know what to do if things go wrong. Now, to make the course a little bit more interesting, I will try to illustrate the different techniques by using explicit case studies from the literature. So we will actually go ahead, read and look into several research papers. And most importantly, we're gonna at least try to replicate the results of the papers. So the idea here is not to only understand and learn the codes of a method, but to actually apply it to a certain research question, see the best practices done by other researchers. But most importantly, I want you to understand which research question requires which numerical approach. Now regarding the economic topics that we are gonna go through in this course, uh, we're gonna see transmission channels of typical macroeconomic shocks, such as technology, 
uh, monetary or fiscal policy, we're gonna have a look at welfare effects, at fiscal multipliers, uh, we're gonna discuss monetary policy in detail, what about trend inflation and different monetary policy regimes. We will also tackle the problem of occasionally binding constraints, think about the zero lower bound on nominal interest rates, and we will also study models that are useful to think about epidemics or climate change in terms of which environmental policy regimes are useful or not. So the goal again is to get familiar with a variety of algorithms, examples and situations in which computational thinking is useful in approximating and evaluating abstract macroeconomic phenomena. Now this course is not an easy one. Uh, you need to look at algorithms, at computer code. It is often very cumbersome, challenging, and for sure time consuming. Uh, it will require quite an investment that you will need to undergo. So there is a huge component of self-teaching, of trial and error, um, because we need to get familiar with several things from mathematics, from computer computer sciences and statistics that are typically not taught in, in your undergraduate courses or even your graduate courses. Our approach is a hands-on one. Okay, so there is no classical lecture um, where I provide you with 30 slides and we meet for 90 minutes each week and then that's it. Um, this course is more about practicing and diving into the material and the codes. So in other words, we will most of the times cover a concept first in a, let's say, more user-friendly, simplified way, and then in a more advanced way. Okay, so for user-friendliness, we will mostly use Dynair, which is a widely used toolkit for uh, conducting uh, macroeconomic analysis, like solving, simulating, but also estimating DSG models and doing all sorts of model ev evaluation and analysis with them. Now, Dynair is used in all the central banks, institutions like the IMF, the World Bank, um, and in uh, all macro research departments. It is an open source toolkit. Um, you can have a look at all the functions and full disclosure, I am a member of the development team of Dynair. So it is important for me that you learn it well, very well. However, most users of Dynair take it as a black box, which is good in a sense. But in this course, we will actually open the box and then go ahead and try to re-implement the algorithms in a slightly simplified way to really understand what is going on. Now, our main programming language will be MATLAB for several reasons that we will cover in an exercise. If you don't have any programming experience, that's totally fine. Um, just be aware that you need additional time and act to get yourself familiar and get your hands dirty with MATLAB. I have several resources, I have several exercises for you to do to familiarize yourself with MATLAB um, that I will share with you. But honestly, there are so many great tutorials and videos on YouTube or other platforms. Now, MATLAB is very easy to learn. And this course is also not about you becoming a great programmer, okay? So we try to be pragmatic, we need to understand code, we need to be able to read code, and we need to be able to adjust code and to write our own algorithms. Maybe not in the most efficient way, but in a way that is good and that is understandable. Of course, nowadays there are large language models that will help us with understanding codes and uh, algorithms. And I encourage you to use them here as well, but use them wisely, okay? So if you need help on understanding algorithms, that's a great application of these large language models. They can also help you write codes, but the core focus of this course is that you really understand what is going on. So let's talk about course organization. Our communication is gonna be done via the Mattermost platform, which is some sort of Slack alternative. Um, the link is given to you uh, below. Mm, you need to first sign up to the course um, using a link this, which is only available to University of Tübingen students on Elias. Okay, so go there, sign up and then 
we use MetaMost to, for communications and it's a nice platform to communicate during the week with each other if you have any questions and then in our sessions do case studies or further things that are of interest to a certain method. Now the course materials are all available on GitHub. Also the link is in the description. There you will find detailed to-do lists for each week, what you should read, what you should work on, and what we will do in class together. Because most of the exercises are going to be done on the computer, please bring a laptop uh, with you to the class. If you don't have one, let me know so I can provide you one uh, from the university. And lastly, to get credits for the course, there will be two exams, a midterm and an end term exam, both counting equally towards your final grade. And typically in those exams, I'm gonna ask you to uh, say replicate results of uh, papers. And because this takes time, you will have for each exam two weeks to work on this, do some trial and errors, and then hand in your computer codes and additional documentation via email. Now that's it. Enjoy your first week here and if you decide to take this course, the to-do list is already available. It guides you through all the things that I want you to do in the first week. Mostly get familiar with MATLAB and then uh, I'll see you next week. Have a good day.